So today we got our first real steel on the channel. Now I'm not new to real steel. Before I started this channel, I've been into knives for uh, quite a few years, like back, back five, six, seven years ago. And I'm actually real quick on a pull in. I actually have a lot of real steel knives because back then they were, not that they're not, even right now, they're, they were affordable and they made good designs. Here's an example of one that you might have seen on maybe other people's YouTube channel back in the day. I'm not sure right now, but this is a great little knife. It's got jimping up here, frame lock, over travel stop, pretty smooth light switch or uh, push button. This is a nice little knife. Maybe in the future, I'll do stuff more on some real steel. Here's another one, beautiful carbon fiber scale, stainless steel, so not the lightest. Again, you got the, um, what is it? Over travel stop, whatever you want to call deep-ish carry clip same like this one this is before deep carry was like super popular before they did the recessed screws and everything big chunky button but if you get it right flies out ergonomics great on this thing and check this out again this is an older design before 14c28n became kind of that popular budget steel that does really well anyway what we're going to look at today is a I would say, I guess a newer one. I'm not sure how new it is. Let me just put these away and let's jump into what we're actually unboxing. So like I was saying, in the future, maybe I'll do some stuff on some older real steel knives because if they are available and if the price is still good on them, I think they're a good budget-friendly option for a lot of folks. So maybe I'll revi revive some of those knives if they haven't been around in a bit. This one here is the famous Luna. Now the Luna comes in many models. This one is the Luna Eco. Eco, I guess referring to economy, you know, being, uh, it's the more affordable one in the sense of they have your slip joint, and I think they have multiple varieties of that one. Uh, they might even have a lockback slip joint, a regular non-locking slip joint. Then they have a beautiful one that looks great and it's full titanium. They have one that's carbon fiber titanium, I think. This is more or less the budget version of the titanium one. What I mean by that is it's stainless steel instead of titanium. <laughs> It is a frame lock and it has removable thumb studs. And from what I've seen, it's not meant to be some like super snappy drop shutty one. It's meant to kind of be that sleek carry that you just open close, but we're gonna get into it firsthand and see how it feels, see how it looks, see how it performs. If you're interested in more knife reviews, consider subscribing to the channel. We're gonna have plenty more coming into the future as well as some upcoming giveaways. So with Real Steel, just like the other ones, I remember the packaging, it's identical to this. You get a few things, they always put that on top and they wrap your knife in a microfiber cloth. It actually just started pouring. You see, you might hear some rain in the background. Maybe it'll give it a little ambiance, a little sound to it. All right, let's move this stuff away and get to the good part. So like I was saying, this is the Luna, or is it the Boost? No, the Boost is another one. The Real Steel Knives Luna Eco. Look at that. All right, so it comes pre-installed with, here's your cleaning cloth, I'll move it up here. It comes pre-installed with those thumb studs or thumb stud but it is removable as you can see right there you have a uh, whatever it is i'm assuming a t6 but look at this design how sleek how thin it is this is actually a very thin design you have an extremely deep carry pocket clip which is really skinny uh, i don't think they had to have made it that long but we'll see how it feels in the hand I like how it is very minimalistic and skinny. You have a lanyard loop, which for what it is, doesn't look too bad. The way they just kind of integrated it into that flat part. You just have a nice divoted flat pivot, kind of gives you that little radial effect in the light. By the way, this thumb stud, if you notice, there's kind of a fuller running across the top of the blade. You can loosen this and move it if you want a little bit lower, a little bit higher, depending on how you prefer to deploy it. Or you can completely remove it and just have a frame lock that you can uh, nail nick or who knows, maybe we could even open it with the fuller if it's sharp enough. We'll try that in a little bit. But overall, this is a pretty sleek little guy. And again, they do make a higher end version in full titanium. It's kind of like a, uh, what is it like? Not brush, but you know, that satiny titanium finish. They do one where I think it's titanium on one side, carbon fiber on the other. Let's see how it opens. Like I said, this guy, 
from what I've seen is not meant to be like a super snappy drop shutty knife. Centering is great. Look at the tolerances on this too. Like I said, it's a very thin knife for what it is. Let's quickly go over the price. This guy's only $48.50. They have the blade length at 2.76 inches. Let's do a slow roll. Let's make sure we're not on the lock bar. Check out that blade. That has a lot of belly to it. You know what this reminds me of? Which is the knife has nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing to do with this knife at all. For some reason, if you just look at this like that, forget the thumb set, look at that. For some reason, I'm getting mini Beluga vibes. And that's because I have the mini Beluga, not the regular Beluga. Let me go grab that. This is weird. I gotta see if I'm completely wrong or if I'm even slightly right about that. All right, let's see how crazy I am. This knife has, as you can tell, it's completely different. But for some reason, this blade is giving me mini Beluga vibes. Yeah, a little bit. And it's not just the fuller. It's the way the blade shape is in general. Obviously, it's a skinnier profile like this way, but it has a similar like big belly on the bottom, then goes up, and then the tip just kind of stays. This one kind of goes down a little bit more. This one goes a little bit straight, but again, just uh, gave me those vibes. I just want to kind of do a quick comparison of that. Let's put that over there. Let's see how the lockup is. Very, very tight. Because the tolerance is, like I said, super tight on this guy. What do we have here? Is that a model number? K1110? That's not the steel, is it? Unless it's a steel that I don't know about. Let's see what steel this is, actually. Let me uh, see right now. We're open, and like I said, it's not a drop shotty knife. Oop, there we go. Oh, yeah, that's got a lot of resistance to it. See that? And I'm not on the lock bar at all like i said from the beginning this is not meant to be that type of knife yeah this has a lot of resistance to it but it's just meant to be that sleek knife this little guy here since it is a thumb stud that is attached it does sit up and it kind of offers a little ramp to push into although there is no jimping on it so it's fairly smooth you got a little bit of jimp in here and then you can kind of just rest against it if you wanted let me take a peek real quick and see what kind of steel this is all right i take that back apparently i do not know my steels k110 k110 however you want to pronounce it is apparently a tool steel and that's the steel of this guy very very tough to open and close but if you're looking for a thin knife something that is just minimalistic this guy will do the job. If you want something that's gonna open and close smooth, and I don't mean smooth, because the knife is smooth, don't get me wrong. But if you want something that you're gonna deploy quick and close quick, this won't be your guy. If you want something that's sleek, will ride thin in the pocket, ride very deep in the pocket, kind of offer a classy look. They have this in multiple colors. They have it in a black. They ha I want to say they even have it like in a copper finish. I don't think it's copper. It might be copper colored, it might be uh, coated or something. It's already starting to smooth out a little bit just while I'm opening and closing it. Let's see, full grip. Yeah, that pocket clip, I'm not really feeling it too much. It's nice and thin. You have no guard protection, but you do have a little bit of jimping right here, as well as jimping right here. It's very fine. It's not super, super aggressive, but it gives you a little bit of security when you're holding it like this. And I gotta say, I do like this blade shape. The knife itself, it's a very basic style knife, but it has just enough flair to it with the little bevels and cuts in these random areas it adds just enough to it i think when it's closed it's very sleek but you see a little bit there a little here a little there all of this up here it adds just enough and like i said opening it it's smoothening out a bit the good thing is it's rock solid completely rock solid let's get a weight on this guy like i said the blade shape uh, not the shape the blade length they're listing at 2.76. What, 
let's check it out ourselves real quick. Yeah, that's 2.75. Looks like maybe just a hair over. Cutting edge is about 2. Point what? A little over 2.5, 2.6, give or take. Let's see what this guy weighs. I'm going to say maybe hmm, 2.9 to 3.1. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe heavier. Full stainless steel might be more. What is that? Three on the dot. All right. I was close. I said 2.9 to 3.1. You can't get better than smack in the middle at three flat. So, yeah, like I said, he, he doesn't feel too heavy, but he feels pretty dense because it's full stainless steel. So, I was pretty close. And like I said, when it comes to these frame locks, you just got to be careful to make sure you're not putting pressure, especially this one, because you have this little cutout. You want to just kind of grab it however the hell you feel comfortable. But once you do, it's great. I'm not even, yeah, I'm not even going to bother flicking it. Now, can I grab it by the fuller? Not really. So I'm not going to take this off, or maybe I will. I don't know. Probably not. Point is, if you take this off, you're just going to have a super sleek design that you just pull like that. Very simple. Let's see how sharp this K110 tool steel is out of the box. All right, leftover paper. Let's open this guy up. See, kind of smoother already. Not bad. Come on. This paper's actually been out for a while. It's not like the crispiest paper. It's probably a little on the moisture side. But it does a good job. Let's see, ready? Not terrible out the box. And it looks like we have that same kind of stone wash on the body, on the blade. So it's a very minimal design, even aesthetically. Not just the style, but the color. But like I said, they do have different variants. If you're looking for something like this, they do have a higher end one. I was thinking about getting it. Something just attracted me to this knife but I didn't want to spend that. I don't remember the price. It's definitely well over a hundred for the titanium one. So I figured, let me go for this boost or not the boost. I think the expensive one is the boost. This one is the eco line and just try it out and see if I even want to invest in the more expensive one. And I can say right now, I'm not going to invest in the more expensive one. I don't think it's a bad knife. I just think this is, it's good. You know, it's a good knife. And for some folks, the more expensive one will be great for them if they're looking for that sleek. You know what? This is not the easiest to disengage as well, I'm noticing. It definitely takes quite a bit of force. How's the lockup? Not bad. And you have plenty of room. It's just a very strong lock bar to push over and overcome. Let's clean up a little bit. All right, so real quick, we'll do a quick size comparison of this guy versus, let's say, an Elementum, which a lot of folks have. I'm sorry if you hear my necklace going. I got a necklace on. I might be making noise over here. So he's a small guy, as you can see. Even against the Elementum, he's much shorter. If we go pivot to pivot there. Much shorter knife. Cutting edge. And then lastly, we'll put it up against two famous knives that, as I always say, most likely, if you're in the knife community, you've either handled them, have them, or at least seen them, the Rat 1 and the Rat 2. You can see he's uh, much closer to the Rat 2, although he is still much smaller. Not much, but he does sit inside, as you can tell, the Rat 2 as well. A little closer up just to get a feel for that you can see it's still much smaller and real quick let's uh, take this off just to see how it is 
Come on. Oh, looks like it's a T8. Or am I just holding the wrong one? No, okay. <laughs> wrong again. So I guess it's smaller than a T6. I said T6 originally and then just through the camera I assumed there was a T8. So he's smaller than both of these. So I'm not going to go waste more time grabbing my other tools. Again, you could just imagine you remove that extremely sleek design and then, well, you have a two-handed opening knife. In some places that might actually, um, I'm not sure what the law is. Some places you can have locking. Some places I think you can't have one-handed opening. I'm not 100% sure. But the other thing you could do is maybe move it down just a hair. That'll give you more leverage. Because right now, it takes a good amount of effort. You just got to get it right. So, that's it for this video. Simple little unboxing first impressions of the Real Steel Luna Eco. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about this knife. Subscribe for more. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.